And this is one of the most revolutionary buildings um, of its time, 1931. And um, when you think about what it was people were building at that time, this is just like on another planet. So I'm quite excited to show you one of my favorite buildings. So this is the way that you would have entered the building. You literally drive down this driveway under the house and then around. So let's pretend that we're basically driving. <laughs> so you can see that the Pilotti are kind of set back slightly from the edge, um, but there's just enough space for the car to come around. And then obviously this wouldn't have been here. <laughs> so that's another entrance for the museum, but you come around here and this is where the garage would have opened up. So this is the garage. It's parked here and this would have all opened up to park your car in there, which is so cool. So, well, there was spots for three cars. So the way that the architect was forcing you to kind of enter this building was up this ramp and so what you're looking at is a, is a wall <laughs> so you're actually not really seeing anything but then when you turn around you're kind of you start to um, have these forced views well not forced I suppose controlled views which he's giving you glimpses of the outside here on the veranda and then again through up into like space, this lit up space that is full of natural light. There is that seamless inside and outside kind of transition, which is, I mean, he, along with Mies van der Rohe, these were the, the people who coined these terms that we've been using now for the last, I suppose, well, 70 years, but um, you we really use it more so these days to describe our connection with nature, and yet these guys did it in like 1931 <laughs> and like two in this most amazing way. So this would have been, well this was the, the living room. It looks really empty now but you can imagine it furnished with that amazing view, the fireplace, the built-in furniture, this whole wall that slides open. It's just absolutely amazing. So you can see how he created this connection between the inside and outside. I mean these paces really are seamless. It's like that wall continues from inside to outside literally. So those windows, it's the same it's the same opening. They were they're obviously closed inside but they open outside. You can imagine if this door was open. Um, what a, an amazing space. There literally is no um, the, the, it's the same space and you've got this out outside living courtyard which I mean at it in its time it's just absolutely um, fantastic. The way that he designed what you can see and where is really it's it's very deliberate so there's nothing here that happens by chance. He chose which view you're looking at. So when you're designing a space for a client just think about all of these things that you actually have control over I mean you as the possibilities really are endless I know obviously time spent on a project budget and all of those things come into play but imagine designing your own furniture that is also the windowsill imagine creating a piece of furniture that is also um, uh, a partition between you and the bathroom or in a non-suite. It's just, there's so much more to what something can be. And I think the possibilities these days really are endless. So, you know, gaining inspiration from a building that was revolutionary in its time, you know, for ideas that we're still using today and are still modern, like so many years later, um, just think about what you can create. It's, it's endless.